All right, it's been a few weeks uh, since we've talked, and uh, there's been quite a few things going on. I, I know I've been out of town quite a bit. Uh, went to Boston to the, the National Planning uh, Convention uh, to get educational credits, and headed off to uh, Fort Worth, Texas. We're dealing with Buxton, which is a group that has uh, retail technology. They do a lot of our uh, site selection. And so uh, we were invited, uh, Kingsport was invited to come out there and uh, be one of the customers that participated in a customer review panel. And uh, it was great to be able to meet other folks from across the country and understand uh, the similarities and the differences between us. Um, but it's an exciting time. They just released a new version of the software that's going to allow us to do a lot more custom reporting. So if you're a realtor or a property owner out there that uh, wants to look at uh, potential uh, matches that for your property as far as uh, tenants, uh, we can help you out starting in July. As soon as that goes live, we'll be happy to do that for you. We, we want to help you be successful so that Kingsport can be successful. Uh, recent activity at the Planning Commission, uh, future phases of the Edinburgh have been approved. Uh, they are working with Orth Homes as well as Windsor Autry. Orth is out of the Johnson City area and Windsor Autry is out of the Greenville, South Carolina area. Both of those builders are uh, pretty prolific uh, from from their from where they've come before, and uh, we've issued about uh, 20 permits for new homes in that area surrounding John Adams School. And I think the thing that's that's kind of interesting about that is uh, they've really begun to modify so that they can take advantage of the current economic situation. Uh, they they're providing some upscale amenities, but they're doing it at a very value uh, a value price. So uh, they also have some pretty creative programs that. Uh, They'll take trade-ins of your existing house uh, on a pre-negotiated price so that they can you know, get you into your new home at the Edinburgh. So again, just like everything else, we try to help developers succeed so that we can succeed as a community. Uh, also at the Planning Commission last month, a 301 East Center Street, which is Bank of Tennessee, we uh, abandoned some alleys uh, so that it, it paves the way for them when they're ready uh, to begin their expansion. And so we're very excited that Bank of Tennessee is continuing to make a uh, investment in downtown Kingsport. And so we look forward to what that's going to bring in the near future. On the annexation front, we continue to work in the Colonial Heights area. On May 26th is our next uh, public hearing at uh, Kendrick Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, if you want more information on that, call Ken Weems at 229-9400 and he can get you some information. If you are impacted by that, any of the future annexations that are going to take place by the end of this year, uh, you will receive a notice in the mail. So you should you know, you should know whether it's going to impact you or not. So, but if you do want to call Ken, he'll be happy to talk with you. Uh, we're basically focusing in the area along Kendrick Creek Road out to, toward the interstate. Um, only the properties that either have sewer or are pretty accessible with a very short extension to sewer uh, are what we're looking at right now. So if you don't have sewer in the Colonial Heights area, there's a good chance that you're not right now on our, our, uh, our radar. So we'll, that'll be a future phase. Uh, last night at the Planning Commission meeting, uh, there was a discussion about uh, the Gateway District. Um, if you're not familiar with the Gateway District, there is a gateway overlay that stretches from the top of Bays Mountain out to the Washington County line on both sides of I-26, and it does include the properties on Wilcox Drive from I-26 up to the river, uh, and also John B. Dennis Highway from basically Moreland Drive out to about Pizza Plus. In that area, there's a special architectural overlay, and the Gateway Commission discussed the possibility of limiting outdoor sales. They were primarily trying to determine how to regulate fire uh, works sales vendors um, and the Planning Commission opted last night not to take the Gateway Commission's recommendation to limit that because they felt that the, the uh, regulations were already in place. If you do have an outdoor sales use in the Gateway, you have to submit for approval to the Gateway Review Committee already. So they felt like that was tight enough regulation. But it's always good to have a healthy debate and deliberation as to uh, what the community wants to see with regard to dealing with some of these issues. Um, Stella Blues Cafe has opened in the Gateway area off, just off John B. Dennis and the old Up the Creek. And uh, we just got uh, a sign plan in on a new um, Asian fusion restaurant that will be taking place uh, in the Damon's facility. So uh, we're looking to get more details on that, but it's good to see those buildings get, get new life. Uh, also last night at the Planning Commission, we talked about the Fort Henry Drive zoning plan, which basically looks from John B. Dennis Highway out to the Fort Patrick Henry Dam. Um, 
that was presented to the Planning Commission for review purposes only, and the neighborhood will now be notified uh, so that they can come in and provide input as well. Uh, for the most part, the commercial activity is, is limited to the uh, southwest side of the highway, so if you're going away from Kingsport toward Colonial Heights on the right-hand side, that's what I'm talking about. They would be focusing the, the commercial activity there. And any deviations from that plan, of course, would have to be approved by the Planning Commission and ultimately the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So we're trying to be sensitive to the neighborhood's concerns and also uh, make sure that uh, we have good uh, high standards for our you know, development in the near future. Uh, finally, today's update on Model City Coalition. Uh, we continue the work in the downtown area. Uh, the Model City Coalition did a plan back in 1999, and uh, that plan basically dealt with how to improve the downtown Kingsport, uh, downtown Kingsport location along with the gateways into downtown, which included from the northwest, like Lynn Garden Drive and Center Street, and from the southeast along uh, Center Street and uh, Wilcox Drive. Uh, continuing to do a fact-finding, basically, the Model City Co Coalition is very pleased with what we see in the downtown area and also the Gateway. Uh, City Manager John Campbell came and gave his Capital Improvements Program update to talk about projects that impact the downtown area. He talked about Sullivan Street and what the future uh, plans are for that, just gener generally looking at that. Uh, imminently, we're going to be looking at the intersection of Clinchfield and Sullivan as a commitment to make sure the traffic can flow well in and around the Kingsport Press facility as it continues to redevelop. And then we'll talk about, you know, what design standard is appropriate from there going toward Church Circle. And it, at uh, that point, we will interact with the neighborhood and help make some decisions on what, you know, what that will look like. Uh, also looked at uh, housing. A big emphasis is on what to do with housing in the Radial Streets neighborhood from Sullivan Street, you know, all the way around Church Circle up toward the hospital. Uh, there's been quite a bit of activity in the past as the hospital has expanded from the north and as downtown and the, and the churches have expanded from the south and that neighborhood kind of gets squeezed a little bit in the, in the mi mi middle. So we recognize that a good stable neighborhood is, uh, is what you're going to need to have a good stable downtown and so we're beginning to have dialogue about what we might be able to do to make sure that that is a, a good place for folks to live long term uh, in Kingsport. We also heard from the Downtown Kingsport Association they are an official member of the Main Street program. I think a lot of folks just think Main Street is just the name of the street. It's actually the name of a national program that has proven principles that if you follow that, your downtown can be successful. So we heard about the four areas that they're focusing on, and, and uh, Todd Miller and is really uh, you know, leading that group very well and positioning it for success in the future. Uh, you know, We look around all around us and we see the downtown parking garage going up. Uh, it should be a available for occupancy uh, shortly after the July 4th holiday. Um, we do intend for the parking spaces to be free, so we want to, we don't want to give anybody a reason not to get off the street and in, into an off-street parking space, so we can save those on-street uh, parking spaces for customers. Um, on, on either end of the downtown parking garage, there is available space for either lease or re rent, possibly purchase, depending on which end of the building you're looking at. Um, KPH development out of Chattanooga has properties facing the Center Street area um, that are available for purchase if you if you wish and they may, may lease it or rent it as well. Uh, the upper floors could be either offices or uh, lofts and so we're hopeful that uh, that'll provide a new construction loft alternative for the downtown area because we have a lot of lofts already but those are all retrofit into older buildings so you know, we try to have a menu of options for, for different folks because different people have different tastes. Um, Food City, of course, opened this week at the Kingsport Press site. It's a very exciting time. Uh, the farmer's market is beginning to take shape. Uh, you can see the fence going in around Clinchville Street and Center Street. Uh, the old Holliston Mills building, which is the historic building, is beginning to take shape. And it'll be a great space for folks to use for special events. If you're interested in that space, contact City Hall at 229-9400, and we'll connect you to the right people to see how you might be able to use that facility for your needs. Uh, long term, we hope that the farmer's market just continues to grow and be a success, and that they can maybe one day move into that uh, building and have many more days and times available for buying local products. 
on one end of that building, we're going to focus on the carousel project. And uh, if you haven't followed that project, I mean, it's really exciting. They're doing the work right now at Linview Middle School, or a community center, I should say. And uh, they're going to be, be focusing that activity now back on this site downtown as far as the future of the carousel. So uh, if you want to know more about that, you can Google it, the Kingsport Carousel Project. There's also a place that you can go online and you can buy a brick that's going to go at the Food City area where you can help sponsor uh, or raise some funds to continue the carousel. It's patterned after the work that was done at Coolidge Park in downtown Chattanooga. I know a lot of folks from Kingsport have been to Chattanooga and they've seen that the little buzz of activity that that carousel on the riverfront creates. And we're certainly hopeful that uh, the same kind of activity will be generated in Kingsport. And our good friends in Saudi Daisy and Chattanooga are helping with that process of teaching us how to uh, carve and, um, and and operate a carousel. So we're excited about that. Um, Steve Smith, uh, with the grand opening yesterday at Food City, and you know, his CEO of Food City, you know, it, it's so nice to be able to come back months after, you know, we initially met with him in Abingdon. And you could see the twinkle in his eye when he, he had the idea to put the water tower in that says Kingsport Press. And, you know, Food City is really a company that has heart, and, uh, and it's evidenced by the CEO because he, he recognized that while we're looking toward the future, we have to be respectful and mindful of the past. And so they spent their own money uh, to erect a water tower. If you don't know any better, you might think it's the original water tower, but it's not. It's a new water tower. It's not actually got water in it. It's just an uh, iconic piece. But uh, it says Kingsport Press. So f from now on, we won't forget that that was a very important and continues to be a very important part of Kingsport's history. So if you haven't been out to see the Food City development, I encourage you to drive by and check it out. And uh, I look forward to talking with you next week.